One of the very important things with a lambing flock is their nutrition. And so the ewes were scanned halfway through their pregnancy. And when they were scanned, we um, condition scored them to find out how good they are in their condition. So one being very skinny and five being very fat. So we feel along the back of the ewe to see what sort of condition she's in. If the ewes are very lean, we put them into a pen where they get extra food. And ewes that are carrying triplets need a lot more grub than a ewe that's carrying a single. And the reason for that is what you want is the lambs to be born at a good size, an optimum size, so that you can give birth to them easily. But the lambs are born big enough and strong enough to get up to their feet and then look for the colostrum. And it's also important with the condition of the ewe that she hasn't put all of her energy into the lamb. She has spare energy to put into her colostrum, her milk. And that colostrum is absolutely essential. It contains antibodies that protect the lamb from any bugs and diseases it might pick up in the lambing shed. And the quality of that colostrum is also very important and it does vary. And what we use to check that is a refractometer. So this is a tool where you take some colostrum from the ewe, you put on a few drops of colostrum onto the slide here, and then you look through the lens and you can see how good a quality that colostrum is. If it's good and she's got plenty of it, that's fine. If it's poor across a number of ewes, then you may have to do something about their diet, their nutrition, add in extra beans, more protein, those sorts of things to lift the quality and level of that colostrum. So the feed that we're feeding our pregnant ewes is a total measured ration. So this is made up of a, a number of different things. We've got straw in here, which is a byproduct of our arable. We've got homegrown barley, beans that we also got off the farm, and then silage. And silage is grass that's cut during the summer and then stored um, in anaerobic conditions. So it pickles. And this has got minerals and molasses in it as well. So it's a, a total measure ration, a complete diet in a balanced way for everything that these ewes need. Now, for some people that don't have the ability to grow silage, or have an arable farm, you can buy in hay for your ewes and you can also buy in sheep nuts. So sheep nuts would have a lot of this in there, would have minerals and barley and proteins so that that is their, their ration and you can buy that from you know any stores or sheep feed supplier. So you don't have to have all your own feed grown on the farm, you can buy it in. Once the ewes have given birth in the larger pens here, we bring them into these individual pens where the lamb can bond with its mother and so that it doesn't get lost in the crowd. And they say that the lamb already knows the mother's voice from when it's been floating around inside it, but the ewe will now learn the lamb's voice. And everyone is individual. So when the ewes are out in the fields with 100 ewes and 200 lambs, they'll be bleating to each other and they can recognize each other's voices. But also one of the really important bonding things here is the ewes smelling the lambs. She licks it dry when it's born and that smell is unique to every lamb. And every time a lamb goes to suckle from its mother, she'll sniff it. And if it smells like her own, she'll let it feed. If it doesn't, she'll butt it away and say, go and find your own mum. So this bonding in this individual pen is absolutely essential. When we bring the lambs in, one of the other jobs we do is dip its navel cord. So that's where it was attached to its mother inside. That's where it got all its oxygen and all of its uh, food through her blood supply. And now that it's been born, that just breaks naturally, can breathe through its mouth and its nose into its lungs, and of course, drink her milk into its stomach. So that navel cord is now redundant, but it's an open wound where it could get infection. So what we do is we dip it in iodine, and that will, oops, stings a little bit. That will stop any infection, and that will now dry up into a little twig and break off and leave its belly button. Yeah. 
wants to use in the pen. We then write on her pen uh, what's in there because there's a rotation of shepherds coming through the shed. So she's a commercial ewe. She's had one lamb born at 4 p.m. So later on tonight, when the shepherd comes along, he realizes there's only supposed to be one in there when it was born and what sort of state it should be in. So it's like having hospital notes at the end of your bed. When the lambs are with their mothers, one of the things that you can do as a shepherd is come along and pick them up and check that they've got nice full tummies. So there we are, that's nice and round. It's got plenty of milk inside it. And then also to check its jaw underneath. One of the things they can get is a thing called wet mouth or watery mouth. And that's an E. coli infection in their stomach that comes up their throat and pours out of their mouth. And they get these wet jaws. And that can be incredibly infectious to other lambs, but it can also kill the lamb that's got it. So you have to treat them very, very quickly. And one of the reasons they get that is because they've picked that up, in, that picked up an infection in the shed because they haven't had enough colostrum. That's why it's so important. The other thing that is important in the lambing shed to stop the spread of E. coli or other illnesses or diseases is cleanliness. So the cleanliness of yourself, washing your hands, wearing clean clothes so that you're not spreading it between pens, washing your equipment. So if you're tubing a lamb or uh, using equipment, you, you make sure it's cleaned properly before you go on to the next sheep. And also we wear gloves when we're lambing sheep. But very importantly, we clean the pens out between each family. So this ewe and lamb in a day or two will go out into the field. We'll muck out all the straw. We'll put down powdered disinfectant. So when the next ewe comes in with her lambs, it's nice and clean. Just like changing the sheets in a hospital bed. Shepherds all across the country will make sure that they've got their lambing kit completely stocked up and ready to go before lambing starts. And then you need to have everything to hand. And so the basics are a paper towel, so you've got a bit of something to wipe your hands on so you stay nice and clean. If you need to go and help you give birth, we have some gloves to put on so you don't introduce any infection to the ewe and it also keeps you clean. And then if the lambs are stuck inside, we've got lambing ropes to put around their feet or around the back of the head and through the mouth of the lamb so you can pull the head forward to help the ewe give birth if you need to. The last thing you want to do is to have a problem with a ewe giving birth and you're running around trying to find your bits and pieces to help you with that ewe. You need it all ready and to hand. There's also some lube in case she's been lambing for a while and is quite dry. That will give you some lubrication to help get that lamb out of the ewe. Once the lamb is born, you bring it into the individual pen. We have iodine to dip its navel, and that's kept fresh. So it's a little tub that we refresh so it doesn't get dirty. Um, purple spray, if you need it, which is a, an antibiotic spray. And then if they do get an upset stomach, um, we have uh, some probiotic here to give the lamb if it's, if it's required. And a pen. Uh, on the end of each individual pen, we have a board, and we can write on what's in the pen. So a ewe with how many lambs she's got, when they, were being, when they were born, if you've had to do anything to them, make sure she's got plenty of colostrum. Because there's a rotation of shepherds coming through the pen here, and what they want to do is be able to walk down and just read on the boards exactly what should be in each pen. And that information is then transferred into our lambing book, so we know where the ewes have come from and what they've given birth to. All of that at hand, on your table, ready for lambing. Visitors have the opportunity to come in and sit on the bales and sit quietly waiting for the ewes to give birth. And yesterday, Charlie, one of the team here, had a ewe in the shed giving birth to triplets. The first lamb was born happily on its own, but then the second lamb was mispresented. They should come out two front feet and nose first, but the second lamb was in a sort of penguin position with its, both its legs back and its shoulders poking out. Thankfully, Luke, the assistant shepherd, came in and helped Charlie, and they managed to deliver all three lambs so they were fit and healthy and well.